it's been 30 years since I first was involved in any publications using deconvolution and about a year ago, maybe slightly longer, I made a video about deconvolution using the Parallel Spectral Deconvolution plugin for ImageJ. But in that time, there seems to have been some problems with Java, and a lot of the times when we use it in the labs, we have some difficulties. And in particular, we had some difficulties this year in the classes. So I thought for this year, we would move to try the Deconvolution Lab, Deconvolution Lab version 2 which only came out, I think, in 2017. It's a really simple deconvolution plugin for ImageJ, and I thought i would do a quick rundown of the different algorithms that are available and how you can very easily use this plugin to clear up your blurry images. So grab your coffee, let's have a quick look. Okay, so we'll I'll go through this quickly because this is a monster plugin and it would take ages to go through everything. But it's aptly named Deconvolution Lab because it is like a lab where you can experiment with deconvolution in this plugin. So I've got a data set loaded, uh, it's a piece of blood vessel, no surprise, um, but it's too big because deconvolution takes a lot of processing and so we kind of want to use smaller data sets. So I'm going to go selection, specify, uh, let's do, let's do a little tiny data set, shall we? Yeah, 128 by 128. So yeah, relatively, relatively small data set. Uh, I'm just going to just check. It's got some interesting stuff. That's all fine. I will crop that. Okay. Uh, make it a little bit bigger. Okay. A very small data set, but it has interesting features. It has some stringy stuff, elastin. It's got some more stringy stuff, like the external elastic lamina. It's got some smooth muscle cells, which are difficult to see. And we've got some holes in the internal elastic lamina which are really important for vascular function and we'll see whether or not Deconvolution Lab can help us to see some of this stuff in a little bit more detail. So we go to plugins and we go to Deconvolution Lab, Lab 2 and this is the version 2. Now, oh yeah, we're in Fiji of course rather than MHJ. Alright, so what do we do? Well, we have to select the image that we are going to uh, deconvolve. So at the moment, I've got this set for the active window. Or what you can do is if you have a data set, uh, you can just drag a data set in, drop it on top of here, and that would work equally well. So I'm on the active window, and I'm using a measured PSF. Now, my measured PSF, let me just show you. Drop this on here. Is an actual point spread function that we collected uh, collected on the microscope, and there it is there. And this is a tiny little point spec bead. You see, it's uh, very pixely because it's a tiny little bead. And if I show you the orthogonal sections, then you'll see it has that characteristic. Uh, shape of a point spread function of a bead which is elongated and unfortunately not symmetrical. I have other videos on point spread functions um, which you could watch. So that's what we're going to use as our point spread function to help us to deconvolve this data set. Now we have a whole bunch of different algorithms that we can choose from. Uh, they all use Fourier transforms, so all of these deconvolutions are done in the Fourier domain and that can cause artifacts uh, like ringing of the image, images and particularly some problems around the edges of, of images. Some of these filters uh, have 
are iterative processes and some of them are non-iterative. So like this regularization inverse filter is non-iterative. All that you've got is a, a regularization parameter, which you could think of as kind of like a smoothing algorithm. Um, let's set it quite low and let's just run. Make sure I've got my active image. Click on my active image here. Um, let's run it and see what we get. Oh, that was quick, wasn't it? Uh, oh, so I should show you. This is the window that pops up. Just a little bit out of the screen grab area. So obviously this is really not, not the filter for me. Not for this particular data set. Well, let's try something that I know works kind of reasonably well. An iterative constrained ticking off uh, Miller. Common um, type of deconvolution. I'm going for 25 iterations here, only for speed. Uh, I would possibly sometimes go for 100 or 150, but the more iterations that you run through, then the more noise sometimes you can get in the in the image. I'll turn the regularization down just a little, yeah, down low. Again, this is all to taste and depending on your own particular data set. Let me just select that as the active image and let's just run it. I'll bring this in here so you can see the speed. Actually, 25 was quite quick. I could probably go, I could maybe do 100. So let's look at these holes. Now you see there, it looks particularly nice. You notice here these three little holes here and this little tiny one there. Really difficult to see them in this data set. You can get an idea here. So, so that's really nice. So the taking off Miller is very good for that smooth structure with holes. For the smooth muscle cells, well, taking away a lot of the fuzz, um, yeah, it's not, not too bad. For the elastic lamina, smoothed it out a bit. Um, Maybe not as sharp, but that might that might threshold and segment a little bit better. So if you were wanting to make an isosurface model of, of these data sets, then that taken off Miller quite good. Uh, that was 25 iterations. Let's just uh, let's just go 100 since that was quite quick. Now let's see how that looks. Oops. Apologies. So I've got my active image and then let's run it. I'm going to bring this in so you can see. I'm not speeding this up. So you can see this is a, this is a pretty fast algorithm and I, and I believe that that speed is gained by the fact that the uh, deconvolution is done in Fourier space. Hmm. But the downside to that is some of the artifacts. Uh, yeah, so you see all this ringing here. Uh, now that's, that's not good. Now we can get rid of some of that by going to the advanced setting, going to the pre-processing, apodizations. And if we choose these, you see there's a, a list of these um, parameters which help to reduce the uh, these ringing effects. So let's just repeat that one, shall we? Um, and then we can compare them side by side to see if that helps. 100 iterations, active image, yeah, let's go. Okay, and it's going away. So introducing that other uh, pre-processing filter hasn't really slowed things down too much. Now when you see the effect that it takes out the edges, has it reduced the well, I don't know. Perhaps not. But then maybe a hundred iterate. Oh, you see that shadow there? See the shadows here? Yeah, and it's still there. In fact, it might even be worse. So it may be that the hundred iterations there was too much. And that's part of the, the fun, <laughs> if deconvolution can be fun. 
that's part of the fun of deconvolution lab is that you you play around you experiment with the with the algorithm and with the pre-processing filters and the number of iterations and the degree of regularization in order to find the ideal algorithm for your particular data set. Let's try one more. Richardson Lucy, uh, quite a common one. Can't remember how fast this one goes. Let's do 50 iterations and see how it goes. We've got the active window and uh, let's just run it. Well, it's not too bad. Uh, I mean, and compared to what we had to do in 1992, uh, this is just incredible to have access to all of these different algorithms, easy access to being able to adjust the parameters, really fast results. So let's see, our holes in the lamina, mm, probably not as good as the ticking off. Uh, smooth muscle cells, uh, too bad. Ah, do you know, you can see this ring around here is because I still have these on. I would maybe have switched these off. Let me just do la one last one. I'll just run that one again. Get a new one. Oh, do you know what? Stop. I'm not sure that I selected the image. I'm going to make that the active image and then run it. Yeah, this stuff to, used to take absolutely ages and all of the images were on, like four images on a disk and the disks had to be loaded in and you know, it's huge, huge amount of time taken. There we go. Well, that's not too bad. Actually, that is quite good. Richardson Lucy is quite good for... Yeah, you start to see some detail here. Uh, it's cleaned that up quite nicely. Uh, it's not too bad there. The holes... Yeah, the holes are quite good. Yep. Yeah. So I would say that out of this little experiment, which was very quick, and um, probably Richardson Lucy looks quite good overall for that particular data set, and that would segment much, much nicer, threshold and segment much, much nicer than, than this one. Okay, I wanted to keep this down to around about 10 minutes or no more than 10 minutes. Uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of how very, very easy it is to bring a data set into deconvolution lab, choose an algorithm, choose your iterations, your degree of regularization, and any um, pre-processing that you might need in order to, to remove the, uh, the, the, uh, the aberrations that you get as a result of the Fourier transform method of, of deconvolving. I hope some of that made sense, or at least has um, interested you in using deconvolution lab I think it's great I would highly recommend that you go and read the paper which is here it's really well um, described has some of the algorithms in there as well if you're if you're interested in the nuts and bolts of how these um, deconvolution tools actually work and I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time and remember to do the thumbs up and like and subscribe if you want me to do some more videos like this and I'll see you next time